All right, so we're in the air for another flight with the uh, T1 Ranger. Go ahead and raise the power on my video transmitter. Um, no major changes since the last flight. The only thing I've done, I've uploaded a mission uh, with a few waypoints that we are probably going to fly today. In fact, let me go ahead and start that now as soon as we kind of point out this direction. Auto. So we're going to let it fly this auto mission. And the other change I made was uh, I switched the speed controllers to DSHOT 600 protocol. Uh, prior to that, I was running uh, just standard PWM. And I switched those to DSHOT just so... Uh, because I can, basically, because it's supported and it works fine. So I just wanted to do that. Uh, for one reason, I wanted to play around with the... Uh, with the pass-through mode in RG Pilot so that I could connect to the... Uh, speed controllers with the uh, configurator and I adjusted the timing on the motors to lower them to, I just lowered the timing a little bit I think I'm running in medium low is one step below the default medium and I wanted to see if it would help my motor efficiency a bit and so far it seems like it might have I really didn't expect it to have a lot of effect basically um, but it does seem to be cruising at a little bit less uh, amp draw than it was previously and my efficiency number looks a lot better But we do have a little bit of a uh, tailwind right now, so that's probably part of that efficiency number but um, And I did uh, solder that video cable I pulled a connector off of the camera and just soldered the cable directly to it so that my video doesn't glitch out or anything when I pan left and right now everything works fine um, I actually think it was a cold solder joint because that connector two of the pins didn't even look like they had solder on them when I pulled them off the board one of them was stuck pretty good but the other two pins were just kind of loose in the board and I really think that was the issue but it's kind of hard to say but it seems to be working now which is fine um, I'm actually gonna switch my recording view I'm gonna switch over to mission planner um, you see we're tracking the model. It does show up as a quadcopter, the icon on Mission Planner, but rest assured it is an airplane. But it shows up as a quadcopter because we're doing the uh, Mavlink emulation through the crossfire. We're not using a full two-way link to the aircraft, which, you know, the, the whole Mavlink deal with, with crossfire. I mentioned that previously. But I basically, I just switched to this, this uh, view here so that you can kind of see that is being tracked on the map in real time and you'll kind of get a better picture of how that mission looks so this is going to be a 90 degree turn here and going to follow this road back north up oh, always and now you'll see that efficiency number is going to go up quite a bit now because we're flying back into the wind we have about a 10 mile an hour wind up there all the waypoints are set at 300 feet um, it's actually dead calm down on the ground, but as you can see, it's not quite that calm up in, in the air, which I didn't really expect that. I thought it was going to be pretty calm. Kind of waited till late in the evening. You see the sun is just about ready to set over there. But I was kind of hoping to get a calm evening to fly it, but I guess we'll just have to average it over the flight if we want to look at the efficiency numbers and see how it performed relative to previous flights. Um... But what I can say though, that running at that 48% cruise throttle, my uh, amp draw is lower than it was previously. And my airspeed looks to be about the same, if that's accurate, which I kind of think it is, pretty close at least. So maybe it's worth uh, dropping the timing down a bit on those motors. Maybe it did help. Um, Another reason I wanted to play around with that, though, see how efficient I can get the stock plug-and-play set up. One thing I definitely want to change in the near future is going to be the propellers. Because I really don't think these are as efficient as they can be. Um, I could be wrong, though. But like I said, that's, that's how we'll find out. We'll just kind of play around, experiment, and log enough data with the stock setup, and then we'll change it and just start making comparisons and see what works and what doesn't.
It's something to play around with. But right now we're uh, just flying this, this mission and what I'll do after the flight, I'll probably download the logs and uh, overlay the actual track that the airplane took, which will show its altitude and position and everything. I'll overlay that on the actual mission just to uh, make a nice little comparison, see how accurate it is at flying a mission like that. But I do expect it's perfectly fine. Well, I mean, I kind of know it is. But, um, I need to make a change in mission planner setup. You notice the trailing end of my, uh, my track the, on the ground track there is kind of following the airplane now. It's, it's decaying, I guess would be the right term. It's kind of watching my video was kind of dropping out right there. I had my antennas faced more south. If I bump the power up, it picks it up a little better, but we'll leave it on lower power setting just so it don't generate too much unnecessary heat. But yeah, my an antennas are face facing more, more southeast. And I guess this corner of the mission over here, you can see it is starting to turn now. See, so yeah, we're fine. We might be getting out of, out of the beam of my antenna over there, but it's fine. So what I was saying, I need to fix that ground track. So let me, I'm going to switch back to this and I'm going to make some changes in mission planner real quick. Uh, where do I do that track length? I'll just set that up quite a bit. And then we'll go back to here. So you can see it, it's stopped decaying off the end of the track but we did lose that part that that fell off there at the beginning but that's fine like I said we'll get the actual full flight in the logs and everything we'll use that to compare the the, the program mission with the actual flight path but I can already tell you looking at it it looks pretty much fine in fact I can open the planner screen or no I, it won't let me open the plan screen yeah it will open the plan screen while I'm flying this is the actual mission that I have set up and you notice this waypoint right here, when it gets to this one, it's going to jump back to waypoint one, which if we look over here, which is right over in this area, this one, we just hit this one. And now we're going to jump back to this one. And I have this set up. If you look down here, it's just a do jump and it's going to, well, actually can't see that. I'm sorry. It's behind my video, but it's, it's just going to jump to that waypoint one. It's going to cycle that one time. So it'll refly this mission and then when it gets back to that last waypoint over there, it'll just uh, start a return to launch and it'll fly back home. That's the plan anyway. Get some power back up a bit. So yeah, everything still feels good despite the wind and everything. You know, it's, I mean, I guess it's kind of good that we got a nice little wind like this. It gives me more chance to fly on windy days rather than just dead calm days, which, like I said in the previous video, that one was a pretty calm flight for that day. But the uh, previous flights, I probably have like five or six flights on it, just little sharp, quick tuning flights. Most of those were on windy days, so the airplane should be pretty well tuned to fly well in the wind. Um, you can see right now, in fact, we're getting bumped around. It's a little bit turbulent. But overall, it seems fine. I mean, I'm totally happy with it. And it is flying this mission as expected. And now that we've caught back up to that previous track, the, we're not missing that data now. You can see it's flying right along that, that same path. In fact, we can turn on auto pan so that it will follow the airplane and we can zoom in quite a bit and I will make this video smaller down here in the corner so that we can actually see how well it's following the actual track you see it's actually doing quite a good job let me zoom out a little bit so it's not so bad image quality I mean, it's basically flying exactly the same course it was previously. If you zoom in far enough, you can see it's it's maybe what, 
within probably five feet. You know, lateral anyway. I'm not too sure on altitude, but you can look at it, my altimeter on the OSD and it's pretty well locked in. I'm kind of curious how well it's going to do on this sharp 90 degree turn coming up. The one we're making right now, you can see is pretty accurate. I'm pretty impressed with that. And you kind of notice that actual, that red line is the actual heading of the nose of the airplane. And it's uh, crabbing into that wind, which is right now a 10 mile an hour crosswind according to the OSD. And it's crabbing into it nicely following its course. But I'm wondering how the overshoot or undershoot is going to look on this sharper turn coming up here. But looking at the, the previous pass that it made on the first cycle through these waypoints, it's pretty well where you want it to be. I'm just wondering how repeatable that is. And there you can see it, it's pretty much dead on. Like I can't ask for any better than that. I'm very happy with it. So yeah, it should follow through these waypoints. And this time, once it gets to that last waypoint, it's not going to jump back to waypoint one. It should finish the mission and return to launch. Zoom out just to get the map looking better. Not sure why it's looking like that. We'll just leave it zoomed out and turn off the auto pan so that we can see the whole mission over here. Like so. And we'll go ahead and make the analog feed a little bit bigger. Leave it because we're going to come back and loiter the uh, rally point, which is just south of home. I'll leave it, make sure we have enough room to see that as well. Yeah, I'm really happy with the way this little airplane turned out. The airplane, the flight controller, RG pilot, um, Crossfire works totally fine apart from the poor performance with Mavlink, but like I said, we're just using the Crossfire telemetry and Yapu tele telemetry script to have all the data on my radio screen, which you can't see obviously, and uh, doing Mavlink emulation so that we can track it on the map. And like I said, it, it's a bit of a compromise, but it works. It gets the job done. And uh, I want to think that dropping that motor timing a bit in the speed controller seems to have improved the amp draw and efficiency numbers. But like I said, we'll have to fly it a bit more just to see. But so far it looks better, what I'm seeing here. Um, I know the motors definitely sound better. They're, they're running a higher uh, update rate and seem to be a little bit more efficient. Or a little bit more, uh, more smooth, rather. And I'm not sure if that's something to do with the timing or... I actually did update... Um, updated the speed controllers to Blue Jay firmware. And then after that I learned that this particular flight controller is not going to support bi-directional D-Shot in our plane because of issues with the timers and uh, DMA allocation, which is direct memory access. Um, my intention was to eventually have motor RPM showing on the OSD, and it was just for a novelty. I don't really have a need or a use for it. It would just be a, a novel thing to have, just to play around with. Um, but once I figured out that was not going to work without a custom firmware build and possibly some soldering on the flight controller to access pins that are not broken out on the actual microprocessor, then I pretty much scrapped that idea and I switched back to, uh, to BL Heli firmware. And I do not know what version was shipped on the speed controllers. I actually never took a note of it. Um, but I did update to the latest version. So I'm not sure if that has it any effect on it either but everything seems to be working fine using D-Shot 600 with a slightly lower motor timing in BL Heli so uh, if you look at the map this waypoint that we're coming up on you can well the corner right there is a waypoint this time rather than jumping back to waypoint one making a 90 degree turn it's gonna turn pretty much straight west from that waypoint to fly back home instead. And once it gets home, it will loiter 
my rally point, which is, which is just south of home, so that it circles home right out there over the fields. So we'll get to see how that all works out, if everything goes as planned. Put the power up on the video transmitter just for a minute while we're out in this area off the side of my antenna. Everything seems to be smoothed out already. And just being able to see the power, the effect on the power, see if I drop this all the way back to 25 milliwatts, that's what it looks like. But if I run it back up a bit, video comes back. But that does let me confirm that, uh, the uh, smart audio is working as intended. So yeah, you can see now once we reach that waypoint, we're in a return to launch now. We're just going to drop some altitude and loiter my rally point south of home. At least that's the plan. I'm kind of curious once, uh, Once we uh, end this mission, I'm going to let it loiter home just a second and then we'll get back down, we'll lose some altitude and uh, just cruise around a little bit low. I want to see if that wind speed estimate down there on the OSD changes or not. So once we reach that home point there, it should uh, tell us that it's going to Light of rally point. I think it tells you that. I'm not sure. Um, if it was in the messages, I guess I missed it. I can look in Yahoo at the messages here. Um, I don't see anything in the messages in Yahoo telemetry script either. But it is doing what it's supposed to. If we zoom in and we look there south of home, you can see. Like I said, this is where I took off my runway there and I have a rally point set out right on the property line between those two fields that you can see, kind of right in that area. And it will lighter round and round those as intended, as expected. And you can also see how nice and round it is loitering even with that crosswind. And it is set to loiter this uh, this point at 200 feet of altitude and it's doing a really good job of maintaining that as well. So it's maintaining its altitude, it's holding its position, it's running a really round circle right around that waypoint. I mean I'm very impressed with it. I have zero complaints. If anything I have nothing but praise for the way it's flying right now. So with that said let's go ahead and switch back to the full screen analog feed and we'll go to I'm going to go to cruise for just a minute cruise. and I'm going to go back to fly by wire A. Fly by wire A. I'm going to drop some power. I feel like my trim is off just a bit cruise. so I'm going to go back to cruise. I'm actually going to cruise with that tailwind so that it's not trimming for the crosswind which it will do if you fly in cruise with a crosswind, it will eventually cr tune or trim itself to fly like that, I think. So I'm just going to go ahead and I guess we'll fly kind of to the back of these woods back here. You can see it's actually kind of trimming itself now. You can see it kind of wandering a little bit left and right to maintain its heading. It's correcting itself and getting things trimmed out. So that should probably be long enough. I think it updates the trims once every... No, I'm not sure how, how often it updates the trims. I know it updates the uh, PID controller every 10 seconds when you're doing an auto-tune. But that's probably not related to any of this. Not directly related anyway. Nice sunset out there. So yeah, that should be long enough to have everything trimmed. So let's go back to fly by wire. Fly by wire A. A. And yeah, this is hands off. You can see everything's trimmed now. I could probably go ahead and just stay out of cruise. Just I'll finish this flight out and fly by wire E. 
while everything's trimmed and maybe turn off servo auto trim. I know most people, well, I, I do know at least some people that fly servo auto trim. Just leave it on. I always did on my other airplanes. It's the only time I've seen it really an issue and then calling it an issue is a bit of a stretch. But the only time I've noticed the auto trim kind of getting in the way, I guess would be the right term is when it'll trim itself for a crosswind like that. But other than that, everything's fine. And it still looking at the airspeed versus ground speed. And again, the airspeed is based on the same estimates that RG Pilot is making to give you that wind speed. But the wind speed is still showing a north nine mile an hour wind currently. And we're down approximately 43 feet according to the OST. And we're a lot lower. Um, so maybe there really is enough wind out there to affect things a bit. But I do know that by the house it's dead calm out here. At ground level at least. But we are shielded by that tree line and the flood levee and stuff like that. When we have a north wind we pretty much don't feel it here at the house unless it's just turbulent air rolling off of that stuff right there to the north of us so maybe if I just kind of cruise around out here a bit you can see the wind speed estimate is dropping off a bit now And basically, to, to get a more accurate wind speed without an actual airspeed sensor, you need to kind of fly circles out here. And, and based on its track and heading and, and the way the speed changes and everything is how it makes these estimates. So you see we are getting, it's estimating down to 5, down 4.9, 4.8, 4.7. I guess it's going to slowly bleed off that wind speed. So we're probably down into calm air down flying this low, this far north. So that's just kind of something I wanted to see. But yeah, you can see the, the sun is pretty much set behind the trees and everything now. So I guess we're just going to cruise back out over the bean field, which will hopefully get cut here pretty soon. And set up a landing on the runway. And we'll go ahead and end the flight. So hopefully it's been enjoyable as I make more progress. Just kind of showing what I'm up to. And uh, I'd like to thank, take the time to thank everyone who makes a contribution to the channel for that contribution. Whether it be monetarily through Patreon or YouTube channel membership. Or just questions or comments below the video and keeping me interested enough to keep doing this stuff. So we'll go ahead and flare now. A nice landing out on the runway. Go ahead and drop the video transmitter power down. We'll disarm. It pulls up my stats at the end of the flight and uh, we'll switch back to normal OSD. Speaking of OSD, one thing I didn't mention, obviously, it's been obvious the whole time though, is I took off the uh, crosshair in the OSD just so it's not as intrusive. Um, but yeah, that's been the end of the flight. So we'll go ahead and uh, put up a picture of the GPS track from the log versus the. Uh, the uh, planned mission and that's probably on the screen already so if you made it this far there you go thank you for watching this one and keep an eye out for what's to come